early in 1862, the Union forces of the West were driving into Kentucky, trying to trap Johnston in eastern Tennessee and take control of the Mississippi River. Ulysses S. Grant, who was then a middle-ranking general, was ordered to take part of the army and was able to travel down to Paducah, Kentucky along the Tennessee River. From there, he drove into the middle of Johnson's defenses in the west, splitting the two forces where the left wing was held at Columbus, Kentucky and the eastern edge at Bowling Green. Traveling south along the Tennessee River, his first plan of attack was to strike Fort Henry, which he did in February 1862. This bit of news was good for the Union, who had not seen any real victories at that point in the war. Fort Henry was a bit of a publicity stunt, as it wasn't a major battle, not a major victory, but because of the dire news that the Union needed so badly, it became a big deal, and Ulysses S. Grant started to rise in fame. Fort Henry was taken on February 6th. With that, the center of the Confederate line retreated eastwards from the Tennessee River to the Cumberland River, trying to hold on to some of these major ports. For the next several days between the 7th and the 11th of February, skirmishes broke out between Fort Henry and Fort Donaldson, separated only by a dozen or so miles. But when the command was trapped at Fort Donaldson, Grant was able to surround them. With the Cumberland River to their backs and the Union Army in front of them to the south, the battle for Fort Donaldson became a major turning point in the history of the United States. Today, we're going to look at that history turning point here on Tabletop History as we review the Battle of Fort Donaldson on February 15, 1862. Fort Donaldson itself was a relatively insignificant piece of ground, important only because of the Cumberland River, which attached itself to the Tennessee River, a major leading point to the Mississippi River, and downstream to Nashville, Tennessee, in the heart of the Confederacy. That late winter time period allowed for then Brigadier General Ulysses S. Grant to begin taking advantage of some different aspects of warfare that had not yet been seen at this point in the Civil War. His rise to prominence would take him from Brigadier General to two years later becoming the full commander of all the armed forces and within seven years becoming President of the United States. Opposing him at Fort Donaldson was another politician, John B. Floyd, who at one time was actually Secretary of War in the James Buchanan administration. Another politician was with Floyd. Gideon Pillow was also a politician, but rose to military notoriety for his service during the Mexican-American War serving with the Polk administration as a delegate in the Democratic Convention, and then continuing on with his military career. The Union forces definitely outnumbered the Confederates by some 8,000 troops, supported by the Cumberland River, which was definitely in Union hands at that point. In the days before the battle, while the garrison at Fort Donaldson was surrounded by the Union, Union gunboats were able to try and pound Fort Donaldson into submission. However, they were not very successful due to the artillery position high on the bluff over the Cumberland River. By the time February 15th came around, the Confederates knew that they could not survive a siege for much longer and planned an attack. 
While Grant was stationed south of Fort Donaldson itself, the Confederates began a sweeping motion on the east side of the battle lines, trying to develop an escape route that would lead east of Dover along the Cumberland River into the south, hopefully further into the heart of Tennessee itself. That morning, Pillow's forces were able to drive back Union positions. While the Union lines were somewhat thinner along the eastern side of the battle lines, they were able to drive them south across the terrain, moving further and further until McClellan's division was pushed back past Wins Ferry Road, opening up the roadway to the east. Nathan Bedford Forrest's cavalry brigade was able to flank around and take up a position that would hopefully allow for the remainder of the Confederate army to slip out around the back. As the Confederates pushed the Union forces further and further south, McClellan's division began to develop into disarray. Falling further and further backwards, their broken and disorganized divisions were not able to hold up the line. Seeing the issue, Grant had Wallace come over in support. Wallace's division, made up of Smith, Thayer, and Cruft's brigades, were able to hold the line just south of the Wind Ferry Road. Although smaller in the actual numbers of brigades that face each other, the much larger units that composed of the Union defenses were able to turn the tide of the battle. The Confederate advance stopped. From there, Union forces were able throughout the early afternoon to begin pushing back the Confederate lines, back across the Wind Ferry Road and up into Dover, rolling up the east side of the battle lines. As the Union forces pushed back the Confederate left, on their right, Union forces also engaged in the attack, beginning to drive onto Fort Donaldson itself. By about 1.30 p.m., Floyd and Pello ordered a general retreat. With Nathan Bedford Forrest able to escape to the east, most of the rest of the Confederate forces were not able to do so. Throughout that afternoon, they fought, but were pushed back further and further towards Dover and Fort Donaldson itself. While some Confederates were able to escape, the large bulk of them ended up being trapped by the Union forces that surrounded them and the Cumberland River, which trapped their escape to the north. The escape failed, and the Confederates were stuck in and around Fort Donaldson. Seeing that, the Confederates ended up surrendering shortly thereafter. The total casualties for the Confederates is huge because Ulysses S. Grant would only take unconditional surrender, forcing some 12,000 Confederates to surrender. From this, he earned the nickname Unconditional Surrender Grant, saying that Ulysses S. Grant was actually Unconditional Surrender Grant, a nickname that he would carry with him throughout the rest of the war. The historical battle site at Fort Donaldson is still recognized and preserved and is able to be visited to this day. And while it is not a major battle per se when it comes to strategy, it is when it comes to morale, as this opened up Ulysses S. Grant, his future, and what eventually became a turning point for the Union Army throughout the Civil War. Our players are going to take both positions for the Confederates and the Union Brigades throughout our gaming of this. With the Union side taking on the role of Ulysses S. Grant, the Confederates taking on John Floyd and Gideon Pellow's commands, we are going to replay the Battle of Fort Donaldson next time on Tabletop History. We hope that you will join us. 
We hope that you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you next time.